Hello, I'm coming to you live in recording. Welcome to Calculus in the PM. I'm your host, Mr. Sudelka. 4.2 differentiation, implicit differentiation. Last example, though. So this is from the textbook. Use implicit differentiation to solve for the second derivative. So we're going to find the derivative, and the second derivative just means do it again. It's like refried beans, right? You fry them, and then you fry them again. Isn't that how you do refried beans? I don't know. So, let's fry them first. <laughs> then we'll fry them again. I like refried beans. They're mushy, like baby food. But they're good. So, I'm moving this through. You don't have to refried derivatives, really, is what this is. d by dx of 2x cubed minus d by dx of 3y squared equals d by dx of 8. I'm writing this out because I'm instructing you. I can imagine that you would be able to skip writing that out totally. Sometimes it's helpful, though, if there's a product rule. There isn't in this case. But. I'm giving you a second. Come up with the next line, and then we'll compare. Solve for dy by dx. I'll give you guys a minute, at least. dy by dx, then we'll do d2. But before you start on the second derivative, we'll all check that we're on the same spot. Tidy up some stuff to uh, change the pen color. dy by dx? I'm sure you've got this next step done. I'll make sure you got 6x squared minus 2 times 3 is 6. Why? But that doesn't match so dy by dx. It's like the chain rule. Zero. You can isolate for dy by dx, I'm hoping. Right now, slant, I see. Yeah. If you want to show steps, you can. If you can jump straight into it, you can. I'm standing in front of it. You got something isolated, though? Okay. Hashim, what do you got? Your smart cookie. Like yeah, for dy by dx. Oh, okay. I got x squared divided by one. x squared over y. Okay, good. Next step, second derivative. We got the first derivative, right? Now, I'm going to change colors only just so that I'm doing another step. d2y by dx squared as the way I say it, dx2. So we're really doing the derivative of the left side, right? And we're just saying that's what this is. Then, how do you do this? This is the quotient rule, right? The derivative of, no. You don't have to write out d by dx of x squared over y, but we are doing that, right? d by dx of x squared over y. So, quotient rule. Derivative of the top, leave the bottom alone, right? So what's the first part of that? 2xy. 2x for the derivative of the top. y, the bottom left alone. Subtract the top left alone, x squared. The derivative of the bottom expression. What's the derivative of y? dy by dx. Oh, I guess I just said it. Yeah. d by dx of y is 1 
dy by dx. It doesn't match, right? So let me put this down. It just doesn't seem right for some people. Then the bottom, the y squared. Y squared. Okay, I'm going to stop there. We're going to do something more than this, though. Now, whenever you get dy by dx in your expression, that doesn't sit well with a lot of people. Me neither. Hey, guess what dy by dx is? This. We're going to sub in, right? Oh, so, so, and we know dy by dx x squared over y. So here's why I changed colors. So that I can show where that came from. 2xy minus x squared times x squared over y all over y squared. Now I'm going to draw the colors from now on. All over? All over twist? All over. <coughs> Okay. Does that make some sense? Yes. If you have an expression for that dy by dx, put it in. If you're doing a values problem, like where you have the derivative is dy by dx is equal to negative 2, you'd sub in that value for the number if, if you had a number for it, though. Then, I'm going to look ahead here. Obviously, this will be x to the 4 out of y, right? That portion. In order to do some mathematical operations, we need this one out of y as well. Does that make sense? Common denominator on the numerator. So, we have to multiply top and bottom of the first part by y over y. We multiply by a form of 1, right? y over y, only for the first portion. So this is going to be 2xy squared over y. That's how you get the common denominator. Top bottom for just that little portion multiplied by y over y minus x to the 4 over y all over y squared. Now, I think you know how to simplify the top the numerator with the fractions in it. Just keep it out of y. But what are you going to do about the divide by y squared? If I asked a grade 8 kid, how do you divide with fractions? You'd say? Subtract. No, you wouldn't yeah, say subtract. <laughs> multiply by the reciprocal. Multiply by the reciprocal. Flip the second fraction and multiply, they might say. Flip and multiply. The reciprocals. I know what you're saying. Exponents you subtract. And you could do it that way too, actually. And I, I, if you're thinking that way, you might be thinking. I'm thinking. 2xy squared minus x to the 4. I'll write it out in two steps. If you see how to do it in one step, go ahead and do it in one step. I'm not going to hold you back. So that's the numerator multiplied by the reciprocal, 1 over y squared. You don't have to do it this way if you could see that and just say, oh, it's y cubed. Because subtracting negative 2, maybe you were thinking that. Maybe you would. Okay, it's totally what you were thinking. I'm convinced. 2x, y squared minus x to the 4 over y cubed. Now, you could factor out an x on that, right? We'll leave it at that, though. A common factor of x could be yanked out of that, but that's just fine. It doesn't simplify, like, it doesn't cancel out with anything on the denominator. So I'll just leave it there. But to be fully factored, you would. Any questions with this? So if you're doing second derivative, do the first derivative. Isolate for it. Then do your second derivative. And if you can substitute in for dy by dx, do so. Try some of these out. Anyways, it goes on further from what I'd originally underlined. Try those out. I'll stop the recording. <laughs>